So here we have our, our Pyomo program written in Python. Um, and as before, you can see we start by importing the Pyomo.environ module, and then we refer to that as Pyomo from here on. I've also imported a plotting utility. Uh, if you're familiar with Python, matplotlib is a commonly used plotting utility. This is just to help us visualize some of the results. The first thing I've done is uh, entered in price schedule and a charge schedule. So this information here corresponds with, um, as an index in time, the price that I've uh, uh, the price that I've assumed, and then the charge schedule that I've assumed. So this would be P sub T and W uh, Q sub T, as uh, noted in the the problem notation. So I've manually entered this in for now. Um, and the format that I've entered it in is actually important. Uh, Pyomo is expecting that we provide uh, what's called a dictionary, which is a, a Python data structure uh, indicated by curly braces. So a dictionary is going to have an index um, mapped to a particular value or the value associated with that index. So Pyomo needs this particular structure in order to set up the problem. So when you're setting your data, your data tables and things, you're going to want to set it up as dictionaries. Just makes it easier for, for Python to, or Pyomo to interpret that. So we have our price schedule and we have our charge schedule. If we wanted to, we could, we could plot that information, but I won't, I won't do that because we'll see it later. And then we move on to establishing the model, uh, which is, again, using this Pyomo.concrete model um, attribute. Unlike before, where we had hard-coded all the constants and, and values that we needed for the simple problem, here we actually have some uh, parameters that we want to carry along that are associated with the model, that maybe these are, are things that are changing with time or uh, th things that the, the model needs to know about. So here we have uh, our number of time steps. I've denoted that NT. And again, it's the same way of specifying these as variables or, or constraints or objectives. You give it an, a name that you choose. NT is the name I chose. Uh, and then we assign to that name, which becomes an attribute of the model, a parameter. Right? So this pyoma.param uh, is a, a class with a, this method for initializing a parameter. And we have to give it a couple things. First, we're going to tell it something about the domain of this uh, the parameter here. Uh, NT is an integer. And so it knows to treat NT as an integer in all cases. Um, if it was uh, you know, continuous or some other thing, we might want to specify that. Um, this is an optional argument, but it, it can be helpful in some, some situations. Uh, and then we need to initialize this parameter with a value that we choose. So here we're initializing it with the length of the price schedule. So our price schedule up here is um, 12 long, right? So zero index means it's 12 long. So the value NT is going to be assigned 12 when it actually comes down to it. Okay, we also have um, set up our model.t set. So here we have a time horizon. That's the set of uh, indices from uh, 0 to 11. Um, so we're initializing this model T to be a range of the length model T. Uh, which it was specified by NT. So this function in Python range returns a, a list of values from, you know, the, from zero up until the length that you specify. So we're essentially giving it a set um, that has been initialized by a list here in Python. Okay, we also now need to initialize the price and charge parameters. The format here is that we say uh, we, we assign the parameter, we give it the, the um, set that describes the indices that go with this parameter, right? This is now a, a price schedule in time. So we need to include model.t, which is the time domain associated with this price. So we say, yes, the, this is going with price, and then we're initializing it based on the price schedule. So the values in the set model.t should correspond to the left-hand side indices that you give in your schedule when you set up the data. Lastly, we assign values for initial storage. Here we've got uh, 
our, our limit of 500, so our battery is fully charged at 500. Uh, and then we have our maximum power, which we specify W max, and I've given that a value of 150. Next, we're going to provide the variables again, and now we have this is the same, same format as, as before. We're saying model.w is a pyoma.var. Uh, the difference now is uh, we have to give it a domain over which this variable is valid, right? over which it's uh, defined. Um, previously, we just said that the domain was pyoma.nonnegative reals. Here, the indices for this go along with model.t, just as they did for model.price and model.charge. This creates a subscript uh, or, or an indexed variable uh, over the indices contained in model.t. So now we have W that is defined for all T, and S that's defined for all T. So that's how we set up the problem. Next, we're going to create an objective function. Uh, unlike before, where I'd used, uh, if we look back at our simple model, the way I'd set it up was I created a lambda function that was an inline function that it quickly evaluated the objective. Um, this, the contents that I've highlighted here, can be any function. We just happen to have uh, wrote it as an inline function. Um, now, instead of doing the inline function because it's a little bit more, uh, li a little bit more complicated, I'm actually define a function here in the code, and I'll call that objective function. I need to pass the model as an argument to that function. In all cases, we're always passing the model as an argument, uh, and then I'm going to do calculations based on the attributes of that model. So here. My objective is to maximize the product of power at time t times price at time t for every single t in the time horizon model t. Right. So here's the here's the the notation for writing this. It's you know for every t in model t, I'm going to calculate the product of these two values, and then I'm summing up uh, the list that is returned here. Okay. So this. This whole process creates a list of the objective values at each time period. I'm going to sum up that list, return that, that lump sum back to my objective function, and that's the evaluation that's being done. So I define this objective function. Um, I need to add it to the model. So I'm going to create model.objective is equal to pyomo.objective. Now the rule here, instead of being a lambda function, is the name of the function that I wrote up here. Okay, uh, the maximization, uh, we're maximizing this problem. We do that with the sense argument. Now we've defined our objective function. 